Audi's e-tron EV brand gets a sharper edge with this e-tron Sportback model. This coupe SUV has a much more stylish look and, like the standard SUV variant, offers the choice of two battery sizes and two or three motor drive options. If you thought Jaguar's I-Pace was the only battery-powered luxury large SUV capable of rewarding at the wheel, a driving one of these might make you think again. What is possibly the least environmentally sensible vehicle genre on the market? Well, that for sporting, large, coupe-styled luxury SUVs would have to be right up there. Cars like the BMW X6, the Mercedes GLE Coupe, and the Audi Q8. Could a car of this sort ever be really socially responsible? And could a car of this kind ever be really dynamic and rewarding to drive? With its e-tron Sportback model, Audi thinks it can be. This car, as its name suggests, is a fastback version of the brand's regular e-tron, the company's large, full electric EV, which was launched in 2019 to battle segment rivals like Jaguar's I-Pace and the Mercedes EQC. The ordinary e-tron is an impressive piece of technology, but it can sometimes feel a bit flat-footed in that company. The e-tron Sportback, announced in 2020, doesn't just look more dynamic, Audi's move to make sure that it drives that way too, especially in the e-tron Sportback S form we're going to try here. The Ingolstadt brand is really embracing electrification on a grand scale these days. The e-tron and the e-tron Sportback ranges sit just above the compact Q4 e-tron and Q4 Sportback e-tron SUVs and just below the e-tron GT and the RS e-tron GT Gran Turismo Super Sport Saloons at the very top of the lineup, which of course is just the start. It's envisaged that Audi badged cars will make up around a third of the 75 all-electric models promised by the VW Group in the not-too-distant future. Unlike the smaller Q4 or the larger e-tron GT, this e-tron Sportback doesn't sit on a purpose-designed EV platform, which means that, as with the ordinary e-tron SUV, the car's consequently portly weight delivers driving range figures that lag behind those of the class leaders. There is plenty of technology to compensate, though. The sci-fi style virtual mirrors, for example, L-shaped pods which replace ordinary door mirrors and transfer footage of what's happening behind to screens integrated into the doors, where the door handles would normally be. Uh, then there's the clever front and rear axle decoupling system so that drive can be limited to the rear in low demand situations, maximizing range. The e-tron S variant that we're trying here, that goes further. It was launched in 2021 as the world's first EV with a powertrain using three electric motors, uh, two at the back and one at the front a format which, as we're going to see, ushers in a whole new era of drive dynamics for high-performance electric vehicles. Lots to get to grips with then from a car that, in all its forms, aims to redefine what a large luxury SUV coupe can be. So let's put this e-tron sport back to the industry's most comprehensive test. So here we are about to drive this e-tron Sportback, an EV at the forefront of the fresh fashion for a plug-in performance. Is this something that we should look forward to? Well, Audi hopes we can. Their e-tron engineers certainly admired the Tesla models which founded the luxury EV segment, but they wanted their contenders to feel more like cars and less like very sophisticated automotive appliances. But how do you achieve that when you're battling with excess weight and completely different powertrain characteristics from those you'd get in a conventional engine, while at the same time asking owners to fundamentally alter the way they use and drive their cars. Every brand has its own perspective on this. Audi wants its operating systems to feel different yet familiar. So the cabin and the screen architecture is carried over from the brand's other large luxury models, but at the same time there are plenty of bespoke electrified touches, like the way that pressing the start button activates a power meter in place of the usual rev counter, at the same time as the e-tron delivers a pleasingly potent sounding low hum from its e-sound box, and a ready chime signaling you to activate this curious uh, thumb activated 
silver gear selector. Select D, take in the fact that this Audi doesn't have the kind of conventional auto gearbox creep forward function that uh, you will find with some of its rivals and ready yourself for the future of motoring Ingolstadt style. Electric cars may have come on quite a lot since you last looked. Uh, two electric motors are now de rigueur on larger models like this one. And uniquely, faster versions of this Audi can now even offer three. We'll get to that after we've briefed you on the core offering here for the twin motor e-tron Sportback 50 and e-tron Sportback 55 models that most customers for this model line will be looking at. Both share pretty much the same engineering as the existing boxier e-tron SUV we first tried back in 2019, which means that as with that body shape, there are two battery options. The base 50 variant uses a 71 kilowatt hour power pack and the more popular 55 derivative, which like all other e-tron sportbacks, features the bigger 95 kilowatt hour battery that we have here. Either way, with those two models, your battery of choice powers two electronically linked asynchronous motors, one on each axle. Uh, this in turn creates an electrified interpretation of Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. Although in low demand situations, the car will be rear driven thanks to a decoupling system which disconnects the front drive motor when it's not needed. As you might expect, the electric motor output that you get depends on the variant that you choose. The entry level 50 Quattro model often offers 313 PS and 540 newton meters of torque. That's only just enough to move a near 2.5 ton EV of this size with anything approaching alacrity. 62 MPH from rest with the base variant takes 6.8 seconds en route to 118 miles an hour, but you're not going to want to drive like that very often because uh, the best possible EV range figure for an e-tron Sportback 50 is, even with a dose of drive restraint, already pretty modest at a mere 215 miles. You can improve the driving range to a potential best of 281 miles by opting for the bigger battery of the 55 Quattro variant, but that adds 120 kilos of extra weight, so Audi has increased that version's combined motor output to 360 PS with 561 newton meters of torque. And they've added the extra advantage of a selectable S or Sport mode, which for a short burst of up to 8 seconds boosts output to as much as 408 PS with 664 newton meters of torque. And that improves the 62 miles an hour sprint time to 5.7 seconds and the top speed to 124 miles an hour. Again though, driving the car in this fashion will of course see your potential driving range dropping like a falling stone. Uh, apparently the development team just about managed to get this car to lap the infamous 20.8 km Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack twice at full tilt. Ideally though, for doing something like that, you won't want a conventional e-tron Sportback with two motors. You'll need a more sophisticated one with three. The motor industry survived for over a century in its combustion period with only one vehicular power source for its products. EV motoring is only just about entering its second decade and already we have a car with three in the form of the top e-tron S Sportback performance variant that we're trying here. It's the world's first electric vehicle to use three drive motors. The larger electric motor that on a conventional e-tron Sportback sits at the rear has here been moved to the front and that frees up space for two smaller motors to sit on the back axle allowing torque vectoring and fully variable torque distribution between the rear wheels for what should be a considerably enhanced cornering ability. And so it proves, uh, even the standard e-tron Sportback models corner better than you might expect such a prodigiously heavy SUV to be able to do. And that's thanks to low battery placement on the car's modified MLB platform and a consequently low center of gravity. The electrified Quattro system on those standard models works well too. It seamlessly shunts drive from front to rear in a manner that'll give you real confidence through fast sweeping turns. Not quite as much as you'll get with a competing Jaguar I-Pace though. This three motor S model though takes things to another level. Uh, the difference here is that you get real confidence through tighter twistier turns and that's thanks to the electronic torque vectoring system's ability to individually control the amount of drive fed to each individual rear wheel with pinpoint accuracy. And that's based on the grip and load active on either side of the car as you drive through each corner. 
It's sort of like a mechanical limited slip differential, except that here there's nothing except software linking the two rear motors, and they respond up to 25% quicker. Uh, while all this is going on, wheel selective torque control on the front axle uses the discs and pads to gently brake the inside front wheel as you turn, and that further helps to rotate the car into the turn as the rear tires edge towards their limit. The whole setup apparently allows for a very un-EV like lure oversteer on a circuit but for fast road use the traction it provides is genuinely astonishing. When we first tried the rather flat-footed SUV version of this e-tron model back in 2019 we'd never have believed that a version of the same car could be made to handle like this. As promised a fresh standard has been set for EV dynamics here. The only disappointment, as with the more ordinary e-tron Sportback models, lies with the relative lack of steering feel. That's a familiar Audi issue, although the variable ratio progressive rack is certainly accurate. If only that gave you the same confidence as the drive system, what a car this would be. Extra motive power in this S model means a higher output of course, up to 435 PS with 808 Newton meters of torque or with the S mode engaged for overtaking 503 PS and that's a thumping 973 Newton meters of torque. It's enough to simply hurl this Audi at the horizon. Uh, 62 from rest is recorded at 4.5 seconds, but it feels quicker than that because the pulling power is so instant. It tails off only as you edge close to the 130 MPH maximum. Drive more sensibly and the claimed range of up to 236 miles is supposed to be possible. Again, that's distinctly on the modest side. Something like a Tesla Model S Plaid is even faster than this top Audi, but it still manages to deliver another 154 miles of range. Whatever e-tron sportback variant you choose, to get the most from each battery charge, you'll have to spend at least some of the time on the most frugal of the six drive modes offered by Audi's familiar drive select system, uh, that's efficiency. There are five further mode settings, comfort and uh, sportier dynamic, they're the main ones, but there is also all road and off road too if you're on bumpier terrain and auto if you can't make up your mind and you want the system software to do all the deciding for you. Uh, plus there is an individual menu if you want to set up all your own parameters. The various settings change steering and throttle response but they will only change ride quality too if on an ordinary two motor e-tron sportback model you ignore the first two trim levels and you get yourself a variant with the variable adaptive sport version of the standard air suspension setup. Uh, the top Vorsprung trimmed two motor model and all of the e-tron S variants they get the even more sophisticated four corner air suspension with uh, electronic shock absorption control setup that we've been trying here. Uh, that would probably make a big difference on the lesser derivatives but with these top ones uh, that merely compensates to some extent for their potentially larger wheel rims and the extra weight that they have to carry about. Uh, the e-tron S Sportback that we've been testing here that tips the scales at 2620 kilos before options and that's about the weight of a couple of family hatchbacks and that makes it one of the heaviest cars we've ever tested. Which explains why for exemplary ride quality you have to stick to a two motor model and a trim level S line uh, that on an Audi usually delivers the very opposite of that. On an e-tron Sportback of that sort you might even think the ride quality to be class leading. Now perhaps it ought to be. I mean Audi's decision to standardize air suspension on all its large EVs, something we'd see as almost essential for a vehicle with this kind of weight to carry about, gives this car a real advantage advantage over a rival Jaguar I-Pace where air springs cost extra and over a competing Mercedes EQC which doesn't offer them at all. Uh, that combines beautifully for longer trips with another class leading e-tron attribute and that's refinement. All EVs are quiet of course but this one is particularly silent unless of course it's at town speeds emitting its mandatory and in this case a rather dynamic e-sound to alert unwary pedestrians. More than any other brand in the EV segment, Audi's worked hard on refinement. Uh, they've recognized that the lack of an engine din up front merely emphasizes any remaining sound issues, uh, things like wind noise or tire roar and creaking from body or suspension. 
In an e-tron Sportback, you simply don't get any of that, and that's thanks to the unsurpassed standard of body rigidity and the exemplary build quality from the Brussels factory. Plus, of course, there's the superbly sleek 0.26 CD drag coefficient. That's pretty good for a large SUV, and it can be reduced even further to 0.25 CD if you opt for the optional virtual exterior mirrors, uh, basically tiny cameras sticking out on stalks where the conventional door mirrors would be normally. Uh, these project an image onto little 7-inch OLED screens built into the interior door cards. Now that sounds very clever, but it actually isn't an easy system to adapt to, so we'd certainly suggest you try it thoroughly first before ticking that particular option box. A prime issue when it comes to peace of mind with an EV of this sort is braking capability, uh, always of particular importance when the car in question is enormously heavy and potentially frantically fast. You'll probably already know that electric vehicles rely on the drag of regenerative engine braking to scrub off speed far more than their ordinary friction wheel discs. Uh, often to date with EVs though, those two systems have remained separate. Now cleverly, this e-tron's integrated electro-hydraulic brake control system, uh, it combines them. Depending on the situation, this setup decides whether to decelerate using the electric motor, uh, the wheel brake, or a combination of the two, and that acts on each axle individually. Most of the time, in the interests of energy harvesting, the conventional wheel brakes are ignored. In fact, they come into play only if you put more than 0.3 Gs of weight onto the brake pedal. Now that might sound as if not much retardation happens unless you really stamp on the anchors, uh, but you probably only think that if you hadn't experienced the full extent of regenerative braking possible in a modern EV these days. Uh, it is considerable, and that's particularly if you use the steering wheel paddles here to select the highest level of regeneration that's possible or you can select an automatic recuperation mode from the central MMI screen if you want the car to choose the correct level of regeneration for the type of driving that you're currently doing. Either way, an electro-hydraulic actuator allows the brakes to build up pressure roughly twice as fast as a conventional system does, uh, which in an emergency stop is supposed to shorten your braking distance in this car by around 20%. What else? Uh, well, earlier we mentioned the all-road and off-road drive mode select settings for bumpier terrain. Uh, obviously, this Audi doesn't claim to be a mud plugger, but it is perfectly capable of dealing with quite extreme surfaces uh, like muddy fields, uh, sand dunes, and snowy tracks. The air suspension can, after all, raise the ride height by as much as 72 millimeters. Uh, there's a manual option to do that. So across slidey or broken terrain, your e-tron Sportback can, if necessary, position itself as much as 248 millimeters from the ground. In addition, the Quattro electric four-wheel drive system claims to be quicker than a conventional mechanical setup at uh, distributing torque between the axles. It always defaults to a rear bias setup, but when necessary, it can forward torque frontwards faster than you can blink, instantly combating wheel slip. In short, even in a blizzard, you'll reach your ski lodge in Val d'Isere without breaking a sweat. But it's more important to know that uh, during the next snowy snap in the suburbs, this e-tron has your back. It's not much good as a tow car though. Uh, the two-motor e-tron Sportback, like the equivalent SUV, has an unbraked trailer weight limit of just 750 kilos, and this e-tron S variant isn't rated for towing at all. Overall, there are lots of reasons why you might like an e-tron Sportback once you've decided whether you're happy with the distinctly modest operating range that it offers and whether you can live with a public charging infrastructure that is still woefully unprepared for the kind of technology that cars like this one can now offer. Uh, like its competitors, Audi talks airily of 150 kilowatt DC charging stations that can recharge up to 80% of battery capacity in just 30 minutes as you sip on a restorative coffee. Uh, that ignores the fact that for the time being, 150 kilowatt charging stations in this country remain rarer than unicorns, which means that the way things are at present, you're still going to have to very carefully plan lengthier excursions. You're going to need to uh, really carefully think out 
your overnight charging regimes and you're going to have to uh, get mastery of this car's regenerative range extending technology and even with all that in place you'll probably still require a second fossil fueled luxury car for longer trips Still, if you can make the drive range and the flaky public charging infrastructure work for you, then there's no reason why this e-tron Sportback wouldn't too. As with the more conventional Audi models, it isn't best in class in every particular area, but it's there or thereabouts in enough of them to an extent that creates a very complete product indeed especially if you can stretch up to this S model, it's good enough to reassure us that contrary to expectations, driving enthusiasts really do have something to look forward to in this new EV era after all. There's plenty going on here. The e-tron Sportback attempts, in Audi's words, to combine the power, presence and space of an SUV with the elegance of a four-door coupe and the progressive character of an electric car. For us, that's a lot of bases to cover in one design, but uh, we'll leave the subjective judgment to you. What we've got here is certainly a substantial piece of Ingolstadt real estate over 4.9 metres long and sitting over 1.6 metres high, although there's plenty of panel work sculpting to disguise the bulk, including this mid-level crease that flows through the door handles and this prominent upper swage line that emphasises the powerful rear haunches. The key difference over the brand's ordinary e-tron SUV is obvious from this perspective, a coupe-like rear roof line cut from the A7 Sportback, which sweeps back Back 20 millimeters down via steeply raked D pillars into a lift back style tailgate. The lower edge of this third side window rises towards the rear, a typical sport back feature, and between this upward slanting lower crease and the lower side sills is a trim panel that's either black with the standard e-tron sport back or silver with this S model. Either way, it's supposed to draw the eye to where the battery and thus the energy center of the car can be found. Nice touches include the optional virtual mirrors, L-shaped pods which protrude on aerodynamic stalks, replacing the ordinary door mirrors, and the inclusion of charging flaps on both sides of the car behind the front wheel arches. They feature copper-themed e-tron badges and they neatly open with the push of a button. And of course, there are big wheels, which on this S model sit in arches 23 millimeters wider. The rims themselves vary between 21 and 22 inches in size. We've got the 21 inch five Y-spoke rotor gloss anthracite black diamond cut sport alloys here. As usual with modern Audis, the front end is dominated by the kind of huge octagonal single frame grille you might think an EV wouldn't need. Uh, this one, which has lower e-tron branding, is light platinum grey uh, with vertical struts. And if you look closer, you'll see it's mainly enclosed, signaling the car's battery status. Uh, these corner air curtain outlets are finished either in black with the standard e-tron sport back, or they feature in larger, more expressive silver trimmed form with this faster S model. As usual, the LED headlights get embellished with the brand's intelligent matrix technology further up the range, but ideally you'd want the extraordinary digital matrix beams we have on this top variant. These feature a small chip containing one million micro mirrors, which are tilted up to 5,000 times a second, not only to adapt themselves more accurately for different driving situations, but also to project dynamic movie style animations on the wall or on the ground as part of a carpet of light. It's very special. Now, whatever headlight tech you've chosen, the lower part of each unit is made up of four horizontal segments that create an e-tron specific signature for the daytime running lights. At the rear, as is usual with Audi's latest large models, a light strip connects the LED tail lamps to each other, emphasizing the substantial 1935 mil body width. The upper edge of the bumper, like the lower diffuser, would be colored black with the standard e-tron sport back, but both look far more striking with the silver finish that's been applied to this top S variant. Either way, the diffuser stretches the width of the underside with a distinctive design signature intended to draw the eye to the absence of exhaust pipes. All the underpinnings here are, of course, shared with the ordinary boxy e-tron SUV, which means that unlike Audi's smaller or larger electric vehicles, there's no EV-specific chassis, but instead a modified version of the conventional MLB platform that all the company's larger models use. 
enough of the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. which as you'd expect is the same up front as with the company's ordinary boxier e-tron large SUV, which in turn shares this three screen fascia with all of Audi's other large series models. So those more used to say an A6 or a Q7 will feel right at home. Although they might continue like us to think that this layered fascia isn't quite as successful in mixing real buttons and touchscreen functions as is the case with the brand smaller A3. Unique e-tron elements include this wraparound trimming arc, which envelops the outer perimeter of the dash, plus there's orange themed lighting around the cabin at night. And the uh, backrest upholstery stitching is designed around a motif, which is reminiscent of electrical circuit boards. More significant differences to conventionally engine Audis can be found in this wide center console between the seats, which of course on an electric car like this doesn't have to accommodate a uh, bulky transmission tunnel. So the brand has instead created this multifaceted compartment to fill the space, a storage area which looks like it should be lidded but which isn't, and which rests on open sidewalls. That's intended to lend it the feel of a light, sleek sculpture. Actually, this aspect of the design is just annoying because items you stash in here tend to fall out if you corner too enthusiastically. You might also take issue with this unusual gear selector here. It's operated by a hand rest, which appears to float above the console, and it's activated by a one-touch action conducted with either the thumb or index finger. It feels awkward at first, but it's one of those things that you'll adjust to and you'll possibly end up rather liking. You could perhaps make a similar observation about this car's technological party trick. It's optional virtual exterior mirrors uh, claim to be a world first, but they were actually first used on the limited run Volkswagen XL1 Eco car back in 2013. Uh, they've not been fitted to this test car, but when they are, they amount to what is basically a GoPro style camera sticking out on a stalk where the door mirror would normally be. Uh, the cameras project their images back to a pair of little seven inch OLED screens, one in each side of the front of the car, positioned just here at the top of the door card, just below the window glass. Now, Addy says it offers them for two reasons. Uh, firstly, to improve aerodynamics. Uh, they reduce the drag coefficient from 0.26 to 0.25 CD, which apparently adds in a few extra miles of driving range. And secondly, as a safety feature, the brand points out that uh, virtual exterior mirrors are clever enough to use navigation data to automatically vary the style of their projected image to give you a clearer rearward view in uh, three driving environments, highway use, uh, turning and parking. They can be adjusted and they can be folded just like normal mirrors too. Our perspective on their safety value is a bit different. Um, first, when you want to look behind you and you're not using your rear view mirror, it's simply not natural to look at the top of a door panel. Uh, you could perhaps get used to that over time, but rather more of an issue is that the OLED screens are prone to reflections and sun flare. Plus they're fiddly to adjust. You have to drag your finger around the screen. Uh, the whole concept here will, well, it'll certainly get your passengers talking, but uh, whether you'd actually want to live with it is another matter. In any case, this cabin already has enough screens. Uh, the one you'll use most is the virtual cockpit display, which is the 12.3 inch TFT digital monitor. You view through this four spoke wheel, which shows, uh, usually shows two virtual dials. There's a speedometer on the right and on the left. There's an EV power meter gauge, uh, the center of which can be configured to show either electrical consumption, uh, average speed, driving time or distance traveled. Uh, the central part of the virtual cockpit screen, uh, that can be configured too, to show either range, trip computer or drive assist data. Or on this S model, you can also prioritize a lap timer. As usual with the virtual cockpit setup, using this uh, steering wheel view button, uh, you can uh, instead shrink the size of the two dials, either to give that central information readout more space, or uh, the ways to allow room for a rather cool full width navigation display. Uh, there's also a choice of overall layout themes, usually either classic with green and blue edge dials or sport where you get white dial edges. This S model also has a further e-tron sport layout, which uh, shrinks everything to a single central dial incorporating range, digital speed, 
and gear info surrounded by a power meter gauge, while all the uh, customizable information readouts that we've just referred to sit to the left and right of the main dial. All of this works, of course, in concert with the two MMI touch response central stack monitors we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, to be frank, we have some reservations about this layout, mainly because it relies almost entirely on screen touch and voice control. The lower iDrive style manual rotary controller you get on the rival BMW iX3 is far more intuitive. To be fair, this twin screen setup does work a bit better than the similar one that's found on Range Rovers and Jaguars. Firstly, because there isn't really anything very significant that you have to look down to see on the lower screen there. And secondly, because all the functions incorporate haptic feedback and that sees the touchscreen surface emit a tactile and acoustic signal when a function is pressed. Now, you don't always get that though unless you prod the screen quite firmly. The higher central monitor is 10.1 inches in size and it features tile apps that you can move around with the kind of drag and drop functionality that you'll be used to from your smartphone. Uh, they deal with the most important radio, media, telephone and navigation functions. Plus, as you'd expect, there's the usual Audi smartphone interface and that's compatible with the wireless Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto systems. And of course, you get a full suite of Audi Connect uh, media connectivity features too, which amongst other things deliver online media streaming, uh, a Google points of interest search function, uh, also a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system, plus there's news and weather feeds via a Wi-Fi hotspot, which supports the super fast LTE advanced mobile data network. Uh, configurable favorites buttons help to tailor the system to user preferences and they allow up to seven drivers to store their preferred settings in individual user profiles and set up to 400 parameters. And there's a particularly useful car section that gives you all kinds of helpful driving range, uh, charging and efficiency orientated readouts. The lower monitor, which is 8.6 inches in size, is reserved for more comfort orientated features, although its screen can also be used to trace letters that the search system can then use to give you selection options. Of course, you might expect that to be just another thing that would leave these shiny displays continually coated in grubby, smeary fingerprints. Uh, that's particularly a problem in these pandemic days with the repeated use of hand sanitizer. And you might also worry about sunlight reflection. Now, Audi has tried with partial success to mitigate both those issues by use of an anti-fingerprint coating and a layer of anti-glare film. But to some extent, both problems do still remain. What we do like about this setup though, is the way that the upper screen can be turned off to prevent nighttime distraction and its main functions can then be summarized on the top part of the lower display. Enough on screens, uh, the leather stitched seats are superbly comfortable and they position you fairly loftily. You certainly sit higher here than you would in a rival Jaguar I-Pace. That's one of the reasons why forward vision here is excellent. As usual though, our models are purporting to be coupe-like, your over the shoulder view isn't quite so great. Uh, the rear pillars are quite thick and that's also exacerbated by the low roof and the small rear window. So it's just as well that parking sensors and a rear view camera are standard fit. What else? Uh, well, fit and finish uh, from this Brussels factory is pretty much faultless. And of course, as usual with Audi, that bulletproof quality is backed up by lovely soft touch plastics, fashionable strip lighting, chrome highlights, and lashings of leather. For us, it's a class above what you'll get in that rival Jaguar, and it's vastly better than what's on offer in competing EVs like the Mercedes EQC and the Tesla Model S. A few words on storage, uh, the open-sided box between the seats that we mentioned earlier on incorporates a cup holder area with pop-out stays, and that's beneath a louvered cover and a whole stack of media stuff, an unusual side-mounted wireless charging mat, plus a 12-volt socket and twin USB-C ports. Behind all this is an armrest which covers a deep flock-lined box, and there's a big LED-lit glove box incorporating a pen clip and coin holders. Audi has forgotten to build in an overhead sunglasses compartment and you will only find a ticket clip on the driver's side sun visor, but you do get deceptively large door bins and a surprisingly big storage compartment down here by the driver's right knee. 
Okay, let's take a seat in the rear. Now we touched briefly on this e-tron model's lengthy dimensions earlier on. It's 139 millimeters longer than a rival Mercedes EQC and 219 miles longer than a Jaguar I-Pace. In fact, amongst direct rivals in the segment, only the Tesla Model S is lengthier. All this bodes well for rear seat space, although you might worry that back seat headroom might be compromised by this swept back roof line. Let's take a look. This Sportback's 20 millimeter reduction in ceiling height might bother you if you're a six footer. Your head will be brushing this immaculately crafted roof liner, but otherwise it feels pretty spacious back here. Inevitably, you'll be much less comfortable if there are three of you and you're stuck in the middle here. Uh, shoulder room with a trio of adults uh, wouldn't actually be too bad, but this middle seat is narrow and it has a stiff backrest. At least there's no prominent uh, transmission tunnel here to impede you though. Uh, just above it are twin vents, a 12 volt port and twin USB-C ports too. Seems a bit mean on a car of this price not to include rear climate controls though. I mean, obviously you can pay extra for the four zone climate control, uh, which would give you that. It's a control screen would sit where this rather useless central compartment sits. Should there be just a couple of you, you'll be able to bring down this armrest, which has a shallow lidded storage compartment, but also rather meanly only includes cup holders if you pay Audi extra for the optional storage and luggage pack. Uh, there are overhead reading lights, there are coat hooks in the grab handles, there are decently sized uh, deep door bins and seat back net pockets. Right, let's take a look at the cargo spaces that this e-tron Sportback can offer. Yes, cargo spaces, there are two of them. We'll start with the one up front. Audi's designers haven't wasted the extra room created by the lack of an engine up front, so e-tron Sportback owners get a fruit or a frunk or whatever else you want to call it beneath the bonnet. Now you could complain uh, quite rightly that it's not very big, but we would point out that this 60 litre space is more than double the size of the front compartment you get in the I-Pace. And that is quite significant because it makes it big enough for the storage of the two charging leads and saves them from cluttering up the boot. The tailgate's power activated, of course, and it can, as here, be specified to work with foot operation. Uh, once it's completed its rather arthritic progress upwards, a decently sized 555 litre boot is revealed. The heavily sloped rear screen means it's 45 litres less than the ordinary boxier e-tron SUV body shape can offer, and dog headroom will be rather restricted if you happen to need that. What's on offer here is also quite a lot less than what you get from a rival Tesla Model S, but perhaps more relevantly, it's a useful 50 litres more than you get with the Jaguar I-Pace rival EV we were just mentioning. Unfortunately, unlike both the Tesla and the Jaguar, you do have to negotiate quite a high loading lip in order to reach this cargo area, and that is topped by uh, this impractical silver panel which will quickly attract scratches and scrapes. More positively, you get some useful underfloor storage space, although of course, much of that will be used up if you're wise enough to specify the optional spare wheel that sits in that deep well. Uh, the optional storage and luggage pack we mentioned earlier on gives you useful luggage compartment side nets, plus a net that you can attach to these four substantial looking chromed tie down points to stop small items from rolling around the boot floor. If you need more room and you need to fold the rear bench, you'll be pleased to find it retracts in a convenient 40-20-40 split, so longer items like skis can be pushed forward between two rear seated folk. Fold everything down and although the cargo space created isn't quite flat, there's no step up to the rearward part and you get 1,595 litres of total space, that's 60 litres less than in the ordinary e-tron SUV. With the rival Jaguar model we mentioned, the back seats only fold 60-40 and they retract to reveal a space with a quoted dry item capacity that's a massive 432 litres smaller. That makes you think, doesn't it? There's a wide range of pricing for this e-tron Sportback. At the time of this test in summer 2021, customers were looking at anything from just over £62,000 for the entry-level variant with the smallest 50 series battery to around £104,000 for the plushest version of the top e-tron S Sportback model that we've been trying here. 
Think in terms of a premium of £1,800 over the standard SUV e-tron body shape. As with that body style, there are five trim levels for conventional models, Technic, Sport, S-Line, Black Edition and Vorsprung. If you're looking at the standard twin motor variant of this Audi, then ideally you'd probably want to upgrade from the standard 71 kilowatt hour battery of the entry level 50 Quattro version to the larger 95 kilowatt hour battery of the 55 Quattro variant with its extended range. The price premium to do that is 10,800 pounds. If you want to go further and get the more powerful three motor S version of this model, which also uses the 95 kilowatt hour battery, then the premium to do that will be just under £9,000. Now that is assuming that you are upgrading from a typical mid-range S-Line spec e-tron Sportback 55 Quattro to the standard e-tron S Sportback Quattro derivative we have here, which at the time of this test cost around £89,000. S variants come only in this standard form or for £15,000 more in plusher Vorsprung guys. If you're looking at getting yourself a plush Audi EV from the company's e-tron sub-brand, uh, then an entry-level e-tron Sportback 50 model will cost you around £10,000 more than the top 50 e-tron version of the next model down in the range, the brand's smaller Q4 SUV. If you're looking at uh, this more powerful three-motor e-tron S model and you'd be as happy with a Super Sport Saloon as with a Coupe SUV, then you'll want to know that for this S variant, uh, you're paying nearly £10,000 more than Ingolstadt's alternative model in the segment, the four-door e-tron GT Quattro, a car which offers up to 27 horsepower more. Of course, you might also consider a conventionally engined Audi as an alternative to an e-tron Sportback. Uh, probably the closest match would be the brand's Q8 TFSIE, a plug-in hybrid PHEV model, which at the time of this test uh, was priced from around £73,000. That's about the same as an entry-level e-tron Sportback 55 Quattro. That electrified Q8 would give you just under 30 miles of all-electric driving range. The £73,000 price starting point for the e-tron Sportback 55 95 kilowatt hour battery model that most customers for this body shape will want prices this Audi a chunk above its two most obvious luxury EV rivals, the Jaguar I-Pace with a 90 kilowatt hour battery and the Mercedes EQC with an 80 kilowatt hour battery, both of which at the time of this test were priced from around £65,000. This Audi does offer a decent saving though over the cheapest Tesla Model S, which in its most affordable long range form costs around £11,000 more, but it does give you around 150 more miles of driving range from a charge. Tesla's next model down is the Model 3, but that's a smaller car and it's a saloon, which in top performance form costs around £60,000. What else could you look at as a direct alternative? Uh, well, Porsche's Taycan EV Super Sport Saloon, that might be tempting. It's priced from around £70,000 with two-wheel drive or from around £83,000 in four-wheel drive form. Both variants have a 79.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. An e-tron Sportback customer though would be rather more likely to want Porsche's Taycan Sport Turismo stylized SUV body style. Uh, now that has standardized four wheel drive and a larger 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and that costs from around 80,000 pounds. You might want to consider alternatives also from BMW. Now to kick off, uh, the Munich maker offers its iX3, which costs around £60,000 and which uses an 80 kilowatt hour battery, but that is a slightly smaller car and it's really more of a rival for the boxier SUV version of this e-tron model. Uh, now we think a closer match to what's actually on offer here with this e-tron Sportback is BMW's iX. Now that in base iDrive 40 form can offer a similar driving range to an e-tron Sportback 55. That's despite using a much smaller 71 kilowatt hour battery and costs around 4,000 pounds less. BMW's top iX model, the xDrive 50, that has a huge 105.2 kilowatt hour battery pack and costs only around £3,000 more than this e-tron S Sportback, but it does offer around 130 miles more driving range. 
So the competition's tough, well-priced, and it's mostly more accomplished than this e-tron Sportback when it comes to maximum driving range figures, which means that Audi's equipment levels have to be generous to keep this car competitive. So we'll take a look at that right now. And let's start with base Technic spec. Now, unlike Mercedes and Jaguar, Audi includes air suspension as standard across the range for this EV. Uh, given the weight that this kind of car can have and the effect that that can have on ride quality, it's a feature that we see as pretty much essential, actually. In this case, it's a fully adaptive system that works in conjunction with the seven settings of the Audi Drive Select driving mode setup. Uh, it automatically regulates ride height and damping uh, as necessary and it also includes a self-leveling suspension and a manual lift system too. Uh, there's also a quattro electric four-wheel drive system and progressive steering which uh, reduces the effort that's needed for low speed manoeuvring. But it does also alter its ratio at higher speeds so that it feels more direct through the corners. As usual with an EV, uh, you also get a couple of charging cables, of course. There's a Mode 2 lead for plugging into a conventional 13-amp uh, socket and a Mode 3 cable for use with wall boxes or AC public charging points. What's unusual here, though, is that Audi provides a charging flap on both sides of the front of the car, so you're not constantly trying to stretch the lead that you're using to a single point. Other standard e-tron features include an impressive range of camera-driven safety tech. Uh, we'll get onto those in a few moments. And most of the luxury niceties that you'd expect on a car of this price, these include full LED headlights, 20-inch five-arm alloy wheels, a power-operated tailgate, an anti-theft alarm, and a high-gloss pack, which finishes the roof frame and the window trims in aluminium. Inside, you'll find twin leather, full leather upholstery. Uh, the seats at the front feature heating, four-way electric lumbar support, uh, powered adjustment, and the memory function too. Uh, there is also an LED interior lighting pack, an auto-dimming rear view mirror, a rear view camera, cruise control with a speed limiter, a removable rear net partition for the boot, and deluxe two-zone electronic climate control. Now that can be programmed to either heat or to cool the car before you get into it. Replacing the conventional gauges in the instrument binnacle there is a 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit screen. That's a high resolution, customizable LCD monitor with virtual dials and 3D graphics. Talking of digital displays, infotainment's taken care of by Audi's MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch Package uh, via a two-screen central dash layout design that the e-tron shares with its A6, A7 and A8 showroom stablemates. There's an upper 10.1-inch monitor that's primarily for Audi's MMI Navigation Package and for the 10-speaker 180-watt uh, DAB sound setup and the lower 8.6-inch display which is used mainly for the car's two-zone electronic climate control functions. Via the upper screen, you can use the standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring setup. Uh, plus, there's voice activation, and that's activated by the phrase, Hey Audi, and the usual Bluetooth, Audi music interface, and various other informational features that show you range and battery information too. You also get the useful Audi phone box package, and that can wirelessly charge your phone and also improve its reception with LTE support. As an included part of the whole MMI system, there's a three-year subscription to the Audi Connect Media Connectivity Package, and that works via an embedded SIM card, which is permanently installed in the car and which operates on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you plan to do a bit of intercontinental motoring. Uh, the setup can work with Amazon Alexa integration, and that means that it can do all those things like manage shopping lists and operate smart home control. Uh, plus, the Audi Connect system also comes with an LTE data transmission module, and that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates in your e-tron a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the super-fast LTE Advanced mobile data network. Uh, through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and your Twitter pages, and it's also possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. 
Uh, the included online media streaming package that will give you access to millions of music tracks. And there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system, which uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. There is also the Audi Music Interface, which offers simple pairing with your mobile devices using two USB ports with charge and data functions. Also built into Audi Connect is the Car2X services system, which the brand has developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. Now this allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions, or to somehow know what's around the next corner. Uh, it's not magic, of course. Uh, the setup is instead driven by a mobile phone supported so-called vehicle swarm exchange of information system, which will see your e-tron sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. What else? Well, you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you even when you're not in your e-tron, thanks to the improved My Audi app. This transmits points of interest to the navigation system, it streams music, and it can transfer transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. Uh, the app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city, for example, and you have to park a few streets away from the venue, then navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete the journey on foot. Uh, finally, as usual with vehicle apps of this kind, you can also use it to get a vehicle status report. You can lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. And of course, as you now expect with a luxury EV, you can now use it to program your chosen charging regime. So that's covered what you get with base Technic spec. What about if you want to spoil yourself a bit more than that though? Well, as I mentioned earlier on, the next trim level up is Sport, which has a smarter dynamic design for the 20 inch wheels, plus softer Valcona leather for the front sport seats, uh, black glass operating buttons, a front comfort armrest, a wireless charging mat, and two USB-C ports in the rear. Most customers though want to start their perusal of the lineup with mid-range S-Line trim, which comes with a much sportier look. That's courtesy of bespoke bumpers, an S-Line rear diffuser, rear privacy glass and larger 21-inch five-arm turbine wheels. S-Line spec also gives you piercing matrix LED headlamps and adaptive sports air suspension. And inside, it delivers a branded perforated leather steering wheel, a black cloth headliner, dark matte brushed aluminium trim and extra leather for the dash, the door armrest and the centre console. If you like the S-Line spec but you want a meaner and more distinctive look then Audi serves up black edition spec which gives you a black finish for the roof rails, the door mirrors, the front grille, the window surrounds, the bumper trim strips and the 21 inch 10 spoke rotor gloss anthracite alloy wheels. Inside there's a flat bottomed leather multifunction sports steering wheel with gear shift paddles. Finally, if you're not constrained by budget, there's top Vorsprung trim, recognizable by huge 22-inch five-spoke structured matte titanium Audi Sport wheels with orange brake calipers. Plus there's black roof rails and a gloss black finish for the exterior Audi rings and the rear e-tron logo. Vorsprung trim gets you the brand's four-corner air suspension with an electronic shock absorption control system. And at this level of the range, you also get Audi's uber clever digital matrix lights, which tailor their beam to different types of driving and include enhanced light animations that can be customized. Inside, there are super sport seats with diamond stitching, a Bang & Olufsen sound system, a head-up display, a heated steering wheel, powered door closure, and a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack. Rear seat folk are looked after with four zone deluxe automatic climate control and with heated seats too. There are opulent inlays in fine grain ash and natural volcanic grey. And you also get an extra package of camera safety elements. We'll cover those off in just a moment. Here we've opted to test the three motor e-tron S Sportback model, which in its standard form gets a trim package that's quite similar to that of the S line in the standard range, but with the addition of special S design finish for the 21 inch wheels, super sport seats with diamond stitching, and the four corner air suspension with electronic shock absorption control. Uh, plus you also get the Audi Beam Plus feature, which projects the e-tron brand logo onto the ground when you open a front door at night. 
and also the exterior updates that we briefed you on in our design section. Uh, they include uh, specific flared wheel arches, unique silver trim bumpers, silver trim on the flanks, aluminium door mirror housings and black calipers with S branding. And finally, if money really is no object, uh, then Audi offers a top e-tron S Sportback Vorsprung model, which gets all the Vorsprung niceties of the standard two-motor e-tron Sportback uh, that we just briefed you on, plus unique five-arm interference design, titanium grey, Audi Sport wheels and a panoramic roof. On to options, as on an EV, before you start spending any additional cash, budget first for the installation of a charging wall box in your garage, if you haven't already got one. Audi has a compact e-tron charging system, which consists of a control unit and a Type 2 Mode 2 cable, and it can be fitted by the brand's installation partner Podpoint for £359. Plus, for another £150, you can specify a neat warm mounting bracket for it to sit on. Otherwise, probably the most notable extra you could consider are the futuristic virtual door mirrors that your Audi Centre will probably be quite keen to tell you about. Now these replace the conventional door mirrors and project images onto little OLED screens mounted on each front door. They certainly look sophisticated, but not everyone likes the way they work in practice, looking down to a door mounted screen rather than at an exterior door mirror does take a bit of getting used to. So try before you buy with that one, uh, especially since for this one extra, Audi charges a cool 1,250 pounds. If you have even more to spend on futuristic tech, then a cool £3,175 gets you Audi's digital matrix headlamps with their coming and leaving home animations. We'd be more tempted to go for three easier to live with extras that have been fitted to this particular test car. Advanced key keyless entry, a 360 degree surround view camera system and the B&O premium sound system with its thumping 16 speaker 705 watt output. Now rather than specifying those three things individually, it makes more sense to get those as part of Audi's optional comfort and sound pack. That's costed at £1,895 and it also throws in multiple multi-coloured extended LED interior lighting. That's another thing that can be ordered separately. It gives you six colour profiles, each with 30 different shades. Here we've also got the two section panoramic glass roof. The front section opens electrically. Sitting in the back will be a more pleasant experience if the four zone deluxe automatic climate control system has been specified. That's said to give rear seat passengers their own climate zone. And many e-tron buyers also pay Audi another £100 for the comfort remote preconditioning feature, which gives you quite a lot more functionality options when it comes to being able to do uh, the same thing from your smartphone. That's via the My Audi app. Uh, you can also get a gecko freshener. What about exterior aesthetics? You'll want to get those right too. Unless you want your e-tron in the only standard colour, that solid brilliant black, you'll need to pay your Audi Centre for one of the optional metallic colours. We've got Catalonia Red here. Uh, there's also a pearl effect finish, Daytona Grey, and a range of even pricier exclusive shades. On this S model, there's also an alternative 21 inch wheel design too, the five Y spoke rotor finish we have here. You can also specify aluminium roof rails plus privacy glass and an extended leather pack for the cabin. They're both optionally available if your chosen trim level doesn't include them. Here we've got the optional carbon twill trim inlays too. On to practicalities. Now, if you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road uh, fiddling with a tyre repair kit the next time you have a puncture, you'd be wise to budget extra for the optional collapsible spare wheel. Not all EVs allow you to fit a tow bar. This one does, and it includes trailer stabilisation with it, uh, and an option too to fit a bike rack. Uh, bikes can also be carried, of course, on the roof if you fit the optional roof crossbars. Uh, they can also take a roof box and carriers for skis and snowboards and kayaks. And for the inside, well, you'll want the storage pack, which includes a series of additions that really ought to be standard. Uh, two cup holders in the rear central armrest, storage space lining in the spare wheel well, uh, side nets in the luggage compartment and a luggage net for the boot. Uh, for that cargo area, we would also recommend that you consider either a protective shell or a protective tray to keep it clean, and maybe also the foldable storage box. You can also get a storage bag, uh, that's for the charging cables, a dash cam and even an espresso maker. 
Enough with optional features, let's move on now to look at safety. And of course, there's a whole armory of electronic camera-driven features. As you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Ingolstadt calls it setup Audi PreSense Front and Basic. And like other similar packages, this one scans the road ahead, looking for potential accident hazards as you drive, and it will automatically brake the car to try to avoid them if you don't respond to warnings. Now, the basic element of this system refers to the way that it will also instantly act to give you the maximum chance of survival if an unavoidable accident is detected. It'll tighten the seat belts, it'll close the windows, and it will even shut the panoramic roof if one's been fitted. As you might expect for the money being asked here, there's also a lane departure warning setup, and that works between 37 and 124 miles an hour. It issues a warning if you drift out of your lane on the highway, and it applies subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you should be. Uh, there's also distance warning. Now this alerts you if you're getting too close the vehicle in front of you. Uh, there's high beam assist that automatically dips your headlights for you at night. And there's also rest recommendation. Now that alerts you uh, if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. Earlier we referenced the fact that top Vor sprung trim gives you some extra camera safety features, uh, namely those in what Audi calls its city assist pack, which includes five main elements. Side assist works as a blind spot monitor, warning you on the move if you're dangerously just about to overtake uh, in the path of another vehicle. Cross traffic assist front warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions, and it can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes and prevent an accident. Uh, cross traffic assist rear warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Uh, Pre-sense rear, that works on the move and it warns you via a flashing light if you're just about to be hit from behind so that you can try to take avoiding action. And exit warning, that warns the driver of potential dangers of traffic approaching from the rear when a door's opened. Whatever e-tron sportback variant you select, we ought to make the point that this car is fundamentally very safe. A strong enclosing frame of sophisticated aluminium crash structures have been implemented to protect this e-tron's high voltage battery, making this car extremely rigid and crash resistant. Plus there are Isofix charge seat mountings, a tyre pressure warning light, and all the usual front side and curtain airbags too, with rear side bags available as an option. Uh, should the worst happen and you have a crash which activates the airbags, then the standard Audi Connect safety and service feature will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. If you want to go further, your Audi Centre will suggest that you consider the optional Tour Pack. It's a £1,950 extra on every e-tron model except the Vorsprung trimmed S variants where it's standard. Now, the Tour Pack is also based around camera-driven features. There are six included. Now, arguably the cleverest part of this package is Adaptive Cruise Assist, which uses a radar sensor, a laser scanner, a front camera and ultrasonic sensors all networked together to permanently monitor your e on surroundings. Uh, drawing on feedback from these systems, plus local speed restrictions and navigation data, uh, Adaptive Cruise Assist works with an integrated predictive efficiency assistant to proactively control acceleration, braking, uh, lane positioning, and distance to the vehicle in front, all at any speed and with functionality which is equally effective whether you're stuck in traffic or completely alone on the road. It's really clever. As for the four other tour pack features, well, there's traffic sign recognition, which can picture road signs and display them on the dash. Then there's turn assist, which detects approaching vehicles at junctions when the turn indicators are activated and which won't let you move off dangerously in front of approaching traffic. Uh, plus there's a collision avoidance assistant, which supports the driver's actions during an avoidance maneuver. It adds in additional steering torque too, and it reduces the likelihood of a collision or of swerving off the road. And finally, as part of this pack, there is also an emergency assist feature, and that's added into the standard lane departure warning system. Now this is able to autonomously bring the car to a safe and controlled stop if you don't respond to repeated warnings about drifting out of your lane, as might be the case if, for example, uh, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. 
It all means that in driving an e-tron Sportback, there can potentially be a lot of safety systems to oversee, particularly if you've ticked a few options boxes. So how on earth can you monitor all the different features in everyday driving and decide which ones you want to activate at any given time? Well, Audi has tried to simplify that whole process here by providing a driver assist button at the bottom of the center stack. And that's there to allow the selection of the kind of electronic security blanket that you want. Now, basic includes only the most important items. Maximum will give you absolutely everything and individual will allow you to pick and choose the features that you want activated. To be honest, we don't really understand why you'd ever want to turn an available safety feature off, but when all of them are activated here, it's certainly very reassuring. Much of the secret when it comes to creating the ideal luxury EV lies in the delicate balance between battery capacity and weight. The 95 kilowatt hour battery that most e-tron sportback models are sold with is larger than the sort of thing that some of its European rivals use. Uh, to take a couple of examples, Jaguar's I-Pace has a 90 kilowatt hour battery and the BMW iX3 uses an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack but this Audi needs those extra cells because it's easily the weightiest car in the class. Uh, with an empty curb weight of 2,565 kilos in its most popular 50 quattro form, it's 380 kilos heavier than an iX3 and 357 kilos heavier than an iPACE, which is why even with the 95 kilowatt hour unit fitted, the e-tron Sportback 55 quattro model's potential operating range, uh, WLTP rated between 232 and 281 miles is a bit less than can be offered by those two European rivals. Measured under the same WLTP cycle, an iX3 goes 285 miles and an iPACE 292 miles. If you need another barometer of segment measurement, uh, then we'll tell you that at the time of this test in summer 2021, the standard long range version of the class establishing Tesla Model S, uh, that could go up to 390 miles. Miles. Of course, if you go for the smaller battery model e-tron Sportback 50 Quattro with its 71 kilowatt hour power pack, range anxiety might on occasion get even more acute. Uh, that variant is WLTP rated at a best of 215 miles, a figure you can easily better with, for example, a little Renault Zoe Super Mini. The heaviest three-motor e-tron S Sportback model we're trying here uses a larger 95 kilowatt hour battery, and that's WLTP rated at between 215 and 236 miles. It's worth mentioning that uh, this is 62 miles less than the other luxury sports EV model that Audi offers in the segment, the slightly less expensive e-tron GT Quattro, which uses exactly the same battery pack. As anyone with the top Tesla will tell you, replenishing a high energy capacity battery uh, isn't for the faint hearted. To get a feel for that, uh, we'll tell you that uh, if you connected a 95 kilowatt hour version of the e-tron Sportback to an ordinary household three pin plug, it would take 42 hours to charge itself from empty. Audi says that you never would. They prefer to talk about the way that a 150 kilowatt public charging point would enable up to 95% of battery capacity to be replenished in only 50 minutes or 80% in just 30 minutes, which as someone recently observed, uh, might be roughly the amount of time it would take to go to KFC twice. Not long then. Unfortunately though, at the time of this test, 150 kilowatt charging points in the UK were rarer than unicorns, but the English DAC company promises us that things will eventually change. The brand has its own charging network, the e-tron charging service, which across Europe provides access to over 120,000 charging points throughout 21 countries. Uh, this provides subscribers with one RFID payment card accepted at a vast number of charge points operated by 18 suppliers across the UK and right across Europe, and it offers two fixed price charging tariffs. Audi has also partnered with Shell, Ford, the BMW Group and other VW Group brands to create Ionity, a joint venture aimed at establishing a European high power charging network. 
At the time of this test, there were around 400 IONIT quick charge stations across the main traffic arteries in Europe. For pan-European motoring, uh, you'll want to have an account with these because at the time of this test, the pay-as-you-go rate was a hefty 69 pence per kilowatt. To begin with, you'll need a card to unlock the charging points, but shortly, technology will be introduced that'll allow your e-tron sport back to authorise itself and to remotely unlock the charging station. It all sounds good, but the reality is that for the time being, as we've been suggesting, finding a decently capable public charging point is still pretty difficult. You're more likely to come across a 50 kilowatt public point, and that can take a 95 kilowatt hour e-tron Sportback's battery from 20% capacity to 80% in 70 minutes. But even these are quite an unusual sight in this country. Fortunately, most of your charging with this car will be done at home once you've had the uh, 11 kilowatt wall box fitted that Audi's electrification partner Podpoint recommends. Uh, once that's installed, it will replenish a 95 kilowatt hour e-tron Sportback from empty in 8.9 hours. It'll be seven hours for the 71 kilowatt hour 50 series model. A lesser 7 kilowatt garage wall box would need 14 hours for that task, uh, which to give you some segment perspective is just over an hour longer than a rival Jaguar I-Pace would need. It works out to roughly 18 miles of range per hour. With a 50 Quattro model 71 kilowatt hour battery, a 7 kilowatt wall box would need 10 and a half hours for a full charge. Audi also offers a charging system connect garage wall box which offers smart charging functions, uh, for example preferred charging at off-peak times, plus it can also work with self-generated solar power uh, provided your house is equipped with a photovoltaic system. Using this the car can be set to charge preferentially using sunlight sourced electricity and it can even be set to charge in line with forecast phases of sunshine. Uh, whatever type of battery replenishment you do, as with most big EVs, the claims here of full overnight charging are only just about justified and they won't add up at all if you happen to have a late night and an early start. Uh, if reducing charge duration is a priority, then ask your Audi Center about the optional second onboard charger which has been developed for this car. Uh, now this is apparently able to significantly increase charging speed to 22 kilowatts. Websites like ZapMap are good for helping you to find the nearest charging station to you, or you can use the MMI Infotainment System's integrated e-tron route planner to organize your journey between charge stations. Bear in mind that the cost of charging publicly will be a bit higher than you'll pay at home. Uh, for reference, if you choose off-peak tariffs with your uh, garage wall box, charging your e-tron could cost you as little as 14p per kilowatt hour, which means that charging your e-tron could cost you as little as 5.4 pence per mile. The brand's My Audi app allows you to manage all charging processes remotely. These include checking the battery and range status, uh, starting the charge process, programming timers and displaying uh, driving statistics. You can also use the app to preheat or pre-cool the car prior to departure so you don't have to use battery power doing that once you're underway. With all we've said about potential charging difficulties, it's possible that we're painting an unnecessarily bleak picture here. Obviously, it's very unlikely that a typical e-tron owner will be running this model as an only car, and we're perfectly aware that the average person's daily round-trip commute is about, well, it's about a tenth of the operating range of this Audi. Ah uh, yes, range. Well, the WLTP, or World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure figures that we mentioned earlier on are nowhere near as high in the sky as the range readings that we used to get quoted under the old NEDC, New European Driving Cycle Test Regime, but they're still pretty fictional. Uh, based on this test, we're perfectly prepared to believe that, say, 225 to 230 miles would be possible between charges in the 95 kilowatt hour versions of this e-tron Sportback. But the point is that to achieve that kind of figure, you'd have to drive this car in the kind of fashion that would never really allow you to enjoy it. Base your journeys around the 190 to 200 mile operating range and we think you'll be being a lot more realistic. Maybe a bit less than that in really cold weather though. Uh, for the 50 Quattro variant, we think you'd be looking at more like 160 to 170 miles as an achievable real world regular figure. 
When it comes to maximizing driving range like most EVs, this car pitches in to help quite a lot. There's an efficiency drive select driving mode that you can activate and in the drive select individual setting uh, you can keep the drive system in its most efficient setting even if you want to alter the parameters of the other elements like the uh, suspension and the steering to better suit your mood. If the optional tour pack has been fitted, then your car will come with a predictive efficiency assistant, which uh, proactively controls acceleration, braking, lane positioning, and distance to the car in front for maximum range frugality. What else? Well, you'll have to keep an eye on the power meter virtual dial on the left of the instrument cluster if you're going to drive with maximum efficiency. And in the central screen's car section, there's also a charging and efficiency menu that gives you a battery level readout, and that's based around either everyday use or long distances. Now, you can change your targeted range mileage by tapping on the colored bar, and the car will then try to work to it by, where possible, reducing power output and maximum speed. At the same time as dialing back the energy consumption of the convenience features like the climate control system. A particularly proactive way of increasing the distance that you can travel in this car between charges lies in the effective use of its various braking regeneration options, uh, which Addy reckons are the most efficient on the market. Not everyone likes the way that aggressive brake regeneration can virtually bring the car to a stop all on its own, uh, which is why you can turn this feature off or dial it back. The central screen's efficiency assist section allows you to switch between automatic and manual brake recuperation. When the whole setup's working to its max, it really does make a big difference reclaiming spent energy as you cruise, slow or stop. When the regeneration system's fully active and you take your foot off the accelerator, uh, the electric motors work in reverse. They become uh, generators of electricity to recharge the battery. In fact, on a hilly road with regeneration set to the max, it's possible to gain as much as 70% of the energy used going uphill uh, through regenerative braking on the way down. We like that stat. What else? Well, we should also mention the integrated heat pump, which harvests heat from both the outside air and the car's electrical components. Uh, the collected heat uh, transforms a special liquid within the heat pump into a gas, and that causes it to rise in temperature. Now, the warmth is then transferred to the cabin via the heating and the ventilation system. Uh, thereby, it reduces the power demand from the vehicle battery on colder days, and it maximizes driving range. Change. Slippery aerodynamics also play a useful part in overall efficiency. Audi attributes up to six miles of driving range gain to this e-tron Sportback's pretty sleek 0.26 CD drag factor or 0.25 CD if you add in the virtual exterior mirrors, a difference which can apparently add up to 3.7 extra miles of range. For comparison, a rival Jaguar I-Pace is rated at 0.29 CD. This Audi's slippery showing is aided by the sleek, smooth underbody area, an adjustable cooling air intake behind the single frame front grille, and just below it, integrated air curtains that efficiently channel airflow across the wheels and back along the sides of the car. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, probably that for company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings because they fall into base VED band A and they will attract just 1% of benefiting kind company car taxation in the 2021 to 2022 tax year and 2% in each of the following years. There's no VED road tax to pay either, and you'll also possibly be interested in the fact that as an EV vehicle owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge too. As for ownership peace of mind, uh, well, you're limited to the usual unremarkable three year and 60,000 mile Audi warranty. Uh, you can extend that to five years at extra cost, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, the battery is covered by its own eight year, uh, 100,000 mile warranty. The same as Jaguar offers, but slightly inferior to Tesla's deal, which covers the battery for eight years uh, with unlimited mileage.
Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. And there's no fuel tank, there's no exhaust system, and there's obviously no internal combustion engine. Uh, you wouldn't think that, though, to look at the service intervals needed here uh, every 20,000 miles or every two years. Still, a Jaguar I-Pace is much the same. Uh, that needs a garage visit every 21,000 miles. As usual, it'll probably be sensible to consider one of the Audi service plans. Uh, those will cover you for virtually everything in advance. Uh, there are four plans available, ranging from two years and 18,000 miles to four years and 36,000 miles. Insurance is a top of the shop Group 50E though. Brokers, it seems, don't like electric cars. Still, the news is reasonably positive when it comes to residual values. Uh, according to industry experts CAP, an e-tron S Sportback will still be worth 46% of its original value or £40,300 after three years or 30,000 miles of use. Direct rivals struggle to match that kind of showing and as a result, an e-tron should be very cost effective to lease for company or private drivers. What about the green issues? Well, Audi's done its best here. The e-tron's built in Brussels at one of the industry's first carbon neutral plants, a plant which has been supplied with 100% ecologically generated electricity since 2012. Uh, that isn't enough to satisfy some in the green lobby though, who get very angry about the whole pure electric car zero emissions ethos. They reckon that it ignores the well-to-wheel demands of supplying the electricity which powers cars cars of this kind. We'd respond by pointing out to these people that they usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting fuel to the pump. Still, if you are one of those enviro-conscious folk, uh, we'll tell you that using a well-to-wheels calculation uh, that's based on the latest UK electricity generating figures, the burden of filling your batteries in the e-tron Sportback 55 will result in a theoretical 51.7 grams per kilometer of CO2 CO2 being released into the atmosphere and an efficiency rate of 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. That's certainly good, but it is some way from being completely green. It's also worth considering the fact that with technology as it is at present, automotive EV batteries are going to end up in landfills at the end of their working lives, which is about as far from being green friendly as it's possible to get. Uh, the Volkswagen Group is working hard to try to change this situation, uh, building a pilot plant at Salzgitter, which either gives batteries a second life or uses them as a source of raw materials after recycling. It's still far more difficult though to recycle an EV battery than it is to recycle a fuel cell from a hydrogen powered vehicle. For us, hydrogen power is the industry's true and long-term environmental solution. But for the time being, EVs are what we have. For all its faults, here is a very clever one indeed though. Arguably, this Sportback e-tron variant is the car the standard model ought to be. A large luxury EV that's more than just a statement of technology, but one instead with extra pavement presence and an added dose of engagement. The compromises required over the ordinary e-tron SUV in terms of rear seat passenger space and luggage capacity shouldn't be too taxing for most likely owners to make. And this Sportback variant uh, also showcases some useful changes to e-tron tech, which Audi has made since this sub-brand's original launch. Technology, of course, is a major selling point here. Some, encouraged by this Audi's conservative vibe, jump to the lazy conclusion that Ingolstadt hasn't done much to advance the segment standard with this car, but actually, this stylish e-tron model offers a number of engineering elements which uh, rivals could certainly learn from. Uh, the clever movie-style digital matrix LED headlamps and the futuristic virtual mirrors, well, they're the most obvious examples of that. Then of course, there's the world first application of three motor tech in this faster S model. And that opens up a fresh level of dynamic capability for cars of this kind. All of this is very impressive, but it doesn't quite compensate for the fact that in the technological area, every EV ideally really needs to shine, that of driving range, this Audi falls a bit short. 
Occasionally you will be astonished by the poise this car has through a corner, but much more frequently you'll wonder why it struggles to get much more than 200 miles from a single charge, which is why we would understand if you admired this sleeker e-tron model, but you came to the ultimate conclusion that a rival luxury EV might be easier to keep fully charged when you're out and about. That might not be of overriding concern to you, of course, with Britain's public charging infrastructure as flaky as it is, even customers for large EVs are rarely choosing them with long distances in mind right at the moment, which means that they might really like this one. Now true, the standard twin motor model isn't quite as dynamic to drive as a rival Jaguar I-Pace, but it is better built, it's more refined, and it has a higher quality interior. All those things will matter hugely to the target audience. Ultimately, as with the ordinary e-tron SUV, you have to really like the Audi brand to really want one of these. But if you appreciate Ingolstadt's cool, understated, considered approach to luxury motoring, then here, a future that's very Vorsprung Dirk Elektrisch beckons.